are all set for the 1999 74th edition of the Hamiltonian Post Parade. Number one, self-possessed. Well, Gus, he's first up on the post parade, and many people, including me, expect him to be first under the wire in this year's Hamiltonian. If he's on his game today, I don't think they can touch him. Mike Lachance, the driver, won the Hambo in 96 with Continental Victory, also in 94 with Victory Dream. He's from Quebec. 1A, Angus Hall. Trainer Bob Stewart has brought this colt a long way. A strong performance in last week's Hamiltonian elimination was just the tightener he needed. Self-possession falter. Look for Angus Hall, the only trotter in history to win at under 155 at both two and three to pick up pieces, the purse, and the hardware. Driven by the legend, John Campbell, a Hall of Famer, has driven in every Hamble since 83 except one. He's won an unprecedented five Hamiltonians. 1B, Raffaello Ambrosio. Like his stablemate self-possessed, Raffaello Ambrosio Rosio is a son of Victory Dream, winner of the 94 Hamiltonian for trainer Ron Gerfine. Unlike his stablemate, he's not given much of a chance of victory today, especially from post position 10. Jack Moiseev, the driver, with his first drive in the Trotting Classic, he captured the 91 Hambo with giant victory. His father also a driver. Number two, CR Renegade. A real consistent colt this year. He's been no worse than third, only twice in 11 starts this year. Wound up the winner of the Budweiser Beacon Course Trot a couple of weeks ago after the apparent winner, self-possessed, miscued in the stretch of that race. You know, Carl and Rod joke about this horse having a third lung because he never gets tired. Rod Allen, the driver, his father, Carl, the trainer. And at two-way, C.R. Commando. Zero trotting Colt champion of 1998 is finding things a little bit tougher in 1999. The fastest freshman trotter of all time has had some problems at age three and won just two of six starts this year. Recent throat infection has been a real setback for him. And Carl Allen, the driver, is driven in eight Hamiltonian finals. Best finish, third with Olaf in 1981. Cherry Hills, number three. Trainer Bill Gallagher has said that he's pretty surprised that his Colt was even having a three-year-old season, let alone competing in this Hamiltonian final. He was on the operating table, Gus, as recently as May to have bone chip removed from his pastern and didn't return to racing until just last month. Dave Pallone, the driver in 98, was fourth among all drivers with 630 wins. Cherry Hills, however, is Pallone's first starter in the Hamiltonian final. Number four, Comet Sale. One of three sons of the Sire Pine Ship in this year is Hamiltonian. Comet's Tale is the third leading money winner in the field this year. Nearly $160,000 despite winning just once and only four starts as trainer John Johnson has won this race before in 1998 with Armbro Gold. Bert Lindstedt, top driver for the Continental Farm Stable, has appeared in the Hamble final 15 times and never won. Pearsall Hanover, number five. An early season standout, Pearsall Hanover won the Dexter Cup in May and more recently the final of the New Jersey Sire Stakes here at the Meadowlands. Made the final for today's Hamiltonian despite a 22-day layoff, the longest of any participants in the Olympics. Mickey McNichol and the Sulky won the 92 Hambo with long shot Al Palima. Enjoy Levesque, number six. Son of Pine Chip started his three-year-old campaign with an easy three-lane score in Sire Stakes action at the Red Mile in Lexington, but upon shipping to the Meadowlands, he encountered some fan racing luck, including an uncharacteristic break at the start of the Budweiser Beacon Course Final. Luke Wallet, the driver, finished fourth in earnings with more than $3.6 million last year, is first in wins and first in money this year. And finally, Devante, number seven. Well, Gus, this Colt is the most seasoned performer in the field with 24 lifetime starts for most of anybody in today's Hambo, but it would be an upset of Buster Douglas proportion should he win here this afternoon. Doug R. Ackerman, the driver, finished fifth in 94 with Federal Yankee. Back in 81, though, he set a world record with a pacer named Leopard at Del Mar. There's your field for the 74th Hambletonian. The field is lined up for the 1999 Hamiltonian final for $1 million. And here they come. And they're off and trotting, and here Saul Hanover gets the first call from the inside. That's CR Commando showing early trot. From the outside comes Angus Hall as they round the first turn. So it's McNichol and Pierce Saul Hanover as Campbell uses Angus Hall's tactical speed now. And self-possessed is right there, keeping him three wide. They battle early as they race to the opening quarter. Off stride goes CR Commando. Around him goes CR Renegade, his stable entry as they race around the turn. 
Then going up on the outside comes Enjoy Levesque. That one moving around with Rafael Ambrosio near the back of the pack. That one followed by Comet's tail. And then moving up is Devante as they pass the quarter. They move around the breaking CR Commando. The first quarter was pretty fast, 27 and 2. They race down the back stretch now. And Mike Lachance with self-possessed will take the lead away from Angus Hall. But right there is CR Renegade. He'll apply immediate pressure as they race past the half. And Enjoy Levesque is getting a great trip on the outside. Here saw Hanover shuffled back a bit, now in fifth, as they race past the half at 55 and three, and they are going at it now. Stride for stride here in the Hamiltonian. Self-possessed, digging in with Mike Lachance, and CR Renegade and Rod Allen take it to them. And Angus Hall enjoying a beautiful trip with John Campbell. He has caught on the inside, and now he gets the second spot. Three wide, comes in Joy Levesque. He looks to rally into it. Right behind him is Raffaello Ambrosio. Here's Hall, Hanover is full out. It's self-possessed. 123 and 3. And they turn for home in the Hamiltonian. And self-possessed starts to turn it on. Self-possessed, though, is drifting out. Angus Hall trying to take advantage. Self-possessed. Mike Lachance keeping him to his task. He's all alone now. And he's home free. Angus Hall will be second. Enjoy the Beck is going to rally, but it's going to be self-possessed. Valley victory legacy lives on. Lachance and Gerpine get their third Hamiltonian with self-possessed 151 and 3. That is a track and world record. record as well, breaking the mark set by Continental Victory in 1996. She was also driven by Mike Lachance and trained by Ron Gerfine. This one just a sweet 151 and 3 stakes track and world record by self-possessed. No surprise he did bear out a little bit in the stretch, Gus, but a great performance. Self-possessed paid 280, 240, and 210. Angus Hall with the place and Joy Levesque finishing with the show. The Exacta paid $11.60. And the trifecta, one, six, and three, paid $56.40. And let's go back to Gus and Gary. All right, Vern, I'm standing with the proud winners, Mike Lachance, the driver, Ron Gerfine, the trainer of Self-Possessed. You, uh, both of you gentlemen, have won now your third Hamiltonian championship. It must be great. Uh, it's a feeling that you just can't explain it. Uh, I always get like a little emotional for races like that, but uh, today, for some reason, uh, I was in, I was out, I was in, I was out with the horse like a couple weeks ago. It looks like uh, he wasn't going to make the, uh, the races. So, you know, I'm, it's just something that I can't explain. It. Now let's take a look at the final and tell us what you see. All right, Mike, we're going to pick it up here on the back stretch. We're heading for the final turn, actually, where you put away CR Renegade. Uh, Rod Allen takes a shot at you, stayed there, you know, side by side for a while. What did you do here? Just chirp to self-possessed, and did he take off, or was CR Renegade simply out of gas? It looked like you accelerated. Well, I just uh, give him his head a little bit. Uh, believe me, uh, he did it on his own. Uh, he felt so good uh, down the F in 55, and he was nice and straight. And in the stretch, I let him drift out a little bit, but uh, just because I didn't want to take a chance to uh, try to keep him on the rail, and he was going to make a mistake maybe, but uh, he was just so strong. He was just the best today. Ron Gerfine, you're watching the race from the sidelines, so to speak. You see Angus Hall sitting right behind or a couple lanes behind your horse. Are you thinking you're home free or you're just waiting for them to reach the wire? Uh, at the top of the stretch, I thought I was home free, but I just Mike gave him just an awesome, awesome drive because he had a lot of decisions to make from the start to the half. And uh, he could have he, he left uh, uh, the Runnegate horse go which, you know, might have really put him in jeopardy, and he didn't. He, he believed in his horse, and he just drove the horse tremendous. And I'd like to, th I, while you give me five seconds with a microphone, I'd like to thank uh, Mike Ross from New Bolton Center and uh, Dr. Nolan and, uh, and uh, Dr. Barmer for uh, helping us through last week when we, you know, we had some minor problems, and uh, it was very important that this horse be uh, perfect today. All right. I, I, knew, I knew you'd get that in there, Ron. Uh, right now, congratulations, guys, and we're going to go over to Vern Lundquist. All right, Gus, thank you very much. We have a rather happy uh, and enthusiastic group gathered around the Hambledonian Trophy, uh, basking in the sunlight, as it were. Joe DeFranks at the Racing Authority, far, far right, Candace Strait, who is Vice President of the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority. And let me uh, introduce Tom Char Charters, who is uh, President and CEO of the Hambletonian Society, who will make the presentation. Tom? Uh, Lou? 
pleased to congratulate you and right, and all the members of the self possessed stable and your horse is a wonderful addition to this great roster of champions on the tier here thank you very much Tom. Lou Damiano and his wife Debbie it's uh, quite a moment for you is it not yes it is we've been here a couple of times and we've never uh, Never really got a check in this race, but um, one of my associates at work said this week, if you take enough swings at the pitch, sometime you'll get a hit. I think we got a grand slam today. Congratulations from all of us. Thank you.